to make a farm for every item in the game of Minecraft. This has been my crazy goal for over the last 12 years. We are currently over 90% of the way there, but with the recent 1.18 new version has come some really big changes to water mobs, meaning that some of my farms are less efficient or altogether don't work anymore. Hello there, right here today guys, we will be looking at new ways to farm up tropical fish in a bucket, squids, glow squid, dolphins, cod, salmon, tropical fish, puffer fish, and even axolotls. Now get ready for your brain to grow three times bigger as I show you all the secret tricks I use to make my simple farms a success. And if you would ever like to see how I design my farms from scratch, I do it all live on Twitch every Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And at the end of the video, we're going to talk about Team C's fundraiser. We got a lot of new stuff to cover, so leave a like and let's get started. Let's take a look at my tropical fish farm. It's quite simple to build, but I came up with tons of cool tricks to make this an elegant masterpiece. But first, let's talk about why you would even want a tropical fish farm. It's great in getting tons of different unique types of fish in order to fill up your aquarium, or you could attempt to go for all 2,700 unique types which can be found in survival. Bucket of tropical fish is also used in order to breed two axolotls, which you can use inside of like squid farms. And in breeding any two types, there is extremely rare chance that you will get the super rare type. This super rare blue type is only a 1 in 1200 chance. And because you cannot find this super rare blue axolotl naturally in the world, but you have to actually breed two together, this means you will have to use around 2,400 buckets of tropical fish in order to get one, which makes this farming must have. Once you do get a blue one, and if you breed it with any other type, there's a much higher chance you can get more blue ones easily. You could also use this to actually grow up baby axolotls, but it's very expensive. The real magic of this farm is all the crazy tricks that are neatly hidden inside. Let's take a look at those. Now, typically you obtain tropical fish in a warm ocean, and that is how my previous tropical fish farm works, but a lot has changed since then. First being 1.18 now brings a new biome that tropical fish can spawn in. That is these lush caves. This has three main advantages. The first being that there is no puffer fish that can spawn in lush caves. Unlike in warm oceans, this means you won't accidentally get poisoned by them, but more importantly, since they both count towards the ambient water mob cap, these caves will give you more tropical fish. The second being that inside of lush caves, tropical fish can almost spawn in any type of water. This includes flowing water like this guy did here as well as bubble columns and the water only needs to be too deep. The second being that you can find lush caves away from other water sources. This is great because oceans as well as rivers spawn fish which have the same mob cap, meaning that if so many fish spawn in them, then none will spawn inside your farm. And since ambient fish will only spawn within 64 blocks of where the player is standing, only rivers and oceans that are within this sphere are ones we actually have to worry about, where this river that's over here is outside of it. And any fish outside of it will despawn. This glowing armor stand sphere is a data pack by Logical Geek Boy that customized so we can see potential places that they can accidentally spawn in. This includes other areas within the lush caves that have at least two deep worth of water. So pretty much all this flooded caves could produce tropical fish. And that is why I'm not AFKing here near the actual lush caves, but instead I'm operating the farm from way up here at this minecart. By taking just a little bit of time to find the right location, you can save yourself a lot of time from having to go around and remove other water sources. Because tropical fish need at least two tall water in order to spawn, that means all these little water patches that you find inside of lush caves are actually not going to spawn any fish so you don't have to worry about them. Their ability to spawn in almost any water type is extremely useful on this farm. Since no mob spawns within 24 blocks of the player, we have this big area where nothing is going to spawn in. So the tropical fish that spawn down here still need to make it up to the player so he can capture them inside of buckets for the next stage. And this is why I have bubble columns here because these guys can spawn inside of it and they also get moved by it so they get moved really fast all the way up to the location where the player is AFK. We also don't have to worry about other water mobs spawning in our farm because the only other one is axolotls but they can only spawn if they have clay underneath them. This next stage here is where we collect the tropical fish. The player will be AFK in this minecart here and as you can see all the fish are right here in front of our face. They can't really fight the bubble columns so they get stuck here at the top and if we do F3 plus B we can actually see how large these fish are in order to click on them. Now the game will only allow us to have around 20 20 ambient water mobs around the player at any given time. We can actually see this in single player by using the F3 menu and right here where it says W20 that tells us we have reached the maximum amount for a single player. Luckily in 1 to 18 every player has their own mob cap so you don't have to worry about other players loading oceans 
and producing tons of tropical fish there. Because even if they do, you'll still get your tropical fish to spawn inside of your farm. But once you get 20, we now need to find a way to make them no longer count. You can do this a few different ways. You can use name tags and name them, or you can make them passengers by putting them inside minecarts. Or you could simply just scoop them up with a bucket of water. And now they're no longer in the game and they don't count. But now we run into the next problem, which is we're going to need a lot of iron buckets in order to collect all these fish and store them. And this is by using the same ingenious trick that I used in my axolotl farm. And that is once you pick up one of these guys inside of a bucket and then you place them down again, they'll have a special tag saying that they came from a bucket, meaning that they are kind of like a player pet and they will not despawn or count to the mob cap. I designed a cool way to automate bucket scooping and placing. So make sure you guys are subscribed as I love putting automation into everything. And currently less than 30% of you guys who watch my videos have actually hit the red button. Let's see if we can get that up to 50%. By having a player ride on the minecart, when he comes by, we're going to have him have an empty bucket in his hand. He's going to have the right click button held down, which makes him scoop up the water sources in there. Then he'll come in front of a fish and he'll right click and scoop up that. Now he's not able to place the fish down in any of these areas because he's not actually aiming at any blocks. But when it comes to this end over here he's going to be aiming at some blocks in the distance so the right click use action will be placed on that which will waterlog that block the actual fish that comes off of there is not going to be placed in the waterlog block but be placed above it which puts them into this place here we have a bunch of ladders to prevent max cramming and then they're just all chilling out in here there is about a hundred of them currently and once you store up a decent amount you can come in and scoop them up and transport them into chest or use them to breed up some nearby axolotls. Getting into the proper AFK location can be difficult, but you start over here and use a spyglass to aim at the edge of this far block. Then you put bucket in your offhand and you also have a bucket in your main hand. Now you hold down right click and while having that held down, you press F3 plus T and when the screen comes up, you release it. This is going to let that mouse button be permanently held down after this loads. So now I'm not holding down any buttons whatsoever. Now all I have to do is go to the left a little bit and that's going to start the contraption out. Now the guy will automatically pick up the tropical fish and he will automatically dispense them and they no longer come to the cap and more fish will come shooting up from down below. Now there is some weird visuals where it looks like the water is not filling in and this is just visuals. The water is actually still there. The fish may appear that they're sitting in air but they're not going to drown. AFKing this farm for one hour produces 1,600 tropical fish. Look at this weird double fish. These two fish are really close together. Finding the right location for this farm is a bit tricky, but the actual build of this is really simple with the bottom of the farm being placed inside of lush caves and 64 blocks worth of bubble columns and a small rail system collecting and placing them over here and that's all there is to it. For the exact parameters you guys can check out the world download link below. Next we're going to take a brief look at squid, dolphins, glow squid, axolotl, and fish mob loot farms and talk about the changes that came to 1 to 18 which makes it so that we need these new farms. First off we're going to take a look at my squid farm which uses axolotls to kill them. The farm itself works exactly as I showed it and you can check out the tutorial on how to build it up in this video here. The only thing that did change is the actual way that rivers kind of get placed into the game. In 1.17 it was a lot easier to find dry riverbeds, typically in dry biomes. But with the new wider and deeper rivers, you won't find dry areas too often. But if you find an area like this, what you can tell is a river because there's grass here instead of having like sand. And the grass color also gives it away. To find this area that doesn't really have any water around it, makes it easy to place the farm in the center of it without having to worry about squids actually spawning in the nearby rivers around it, which saves you time from having to spawn proof those areas. Now if you do have water that's too close, instead of having to remove all the water, you could come in here and place in soul sand. This is going to create bubble columns above all of this, which prevents squids from spawning in it. And by looking at this armor stand sphere, we can see that by AFKing at our AFK point, which is way up in the air, we can force the squids to spawn to our little tank here without them actually spawning in any of these other locations nearby. Standing up here at the AFK point, we can do F3B to show hitboxes, and we can also go into our settings and turn up entity render distance. You can definitely see all the squid that are spawning in down below, but it does take a little while to warm up. Now this farm also works as a salmon farm. You AFK at the second point, which is near enough so that salmon will spawn in this river biome here, but no fish will be able to spawn outside of it. Place it in these axolotls with a bucket will mean they no longer count to the mob cap and you won't have to worry about them despawning. Remember to put some light around your farm because drowns can spawn inside this river. Alternatively, rather than using axolotls, you could put in a name tag guardian in here which would kill the squid as they spawn in. This squid farm produces 920 ink per hour. Keep in mind that farms in 1 to 18 are slower than before because the world is now deeper. You can learn about the impact by watching this video. Now there is no redstone in this design, but if you would like to use my more advanced squid farm, I definitely recommend my one here where it has a flying machine and also is a kelp farm. 
It's also really simple to build up and produces a lot of ink sacs. But squid ink farms aren't really that useful anymore now that they came out with wither rose farms which produce a lot more black dye. And since the main reason why you make a squid farm is for black dye, it makes more sense just to go straight to my wither rose farms. Next we'll take a look at how we can make my glow squid farm work once again. Before glow squids could spawn similar to normal squids which is Y level from 50 to 64. But now they change this so now they only spawn below Y level 30. So this is the exact same farm as my squid farm but instead I just moved it down found a cave that is here at Y level 30 and put it underneath of it. The big cave allows us to put it in without having to remove any blocks. But where horizontally you decide to put this farm in really doesn't make much difference. That's because for the mob cap, dolphins and squid have their own, fish have their own, axolotls have their own, and actually glow squid currently have their own as well. As long as you don't have any big water around the edges of the farm, you're completely fine. Because water sources above the farm aren't going to allow glow squids to even spawn in it. So this is actually one of the easiest farms to make now. I just put this in some big cave that I found. And you AFK 128 blocks from the bottom of the farm up in the air, just like you would a squid farm. And make sure to light up so you don't get zombies falling into it, turning into drowns, or having drowns spawn inside of it and killing off your axolotls. AFKing this farm for one hour produces 1550 glow ink. Next we're taking a look at these mob fish loot farms. These produce cod, salmon, tropical fish, and puffer fish depending on which biome they're built in. My previous designs which are there and there no longer work because fish no longer spawn above 64Y. So what I did is I took my old design and just put it a little bit lower and made it a circular shape to save on some resources. The way ambient fish spawn in the ocean is that they need at least two water sources. The top one needs to be a water source of some type or the bottom one can be any water type including waterlogged blocks. So in the farm here I have water sources here here, this is where they would spawn in. The one below it is flowing water and the one below that is water sources that turn into bubble columns. The flowing water in between prevents the bubble columns from turning the top water sources into bubble columns which would actually stop the fish from spawning in. When mobs spawn in they have 4 seconds where they can randomly pathfind and for fish they'll typically pathfind towards other water which means that there's a lot of other water down here and they end up going downwards and getting pulled into the bubble columns which kills them on the magma. Items are just sitting on top and we have this lovely hopper minecart going back and forth on this rail system picking up all the loot and when it comes back it will unload it over here and put it into this chest. With the newer water long rails it's very easy to place this farm in without having to actually remove any water. If you're having a problem with random squids or dolphins pushing this minecart and stopping it you can put in a wall around it. The way we have water placed in on top of this is that we first come in and place in a floor underneath. Then we place in water sources. Once it's completely filled, we just break our floor. If you build this inside of a lukewarm ocean, you'll get cod, tropical fish, as well as puffer fish loot when you AFK it. If you want to get salmon, you have to build this in a cold or frozen ocean. For ambient fish, we only need AFK 64 blocks above it. Don't forget to put in your phantom protection. And if we do F3B, we can see that there is a lot of fish spawning in and all the items are dropping. So it is actually a very effective farm. Running this farm in a lukewarm ocean, after one hour, it will produce two double chests just like this. The fish can be used for your cats and it also provides useful bone mill. Now this same farm can actually work as a dolphin farm or a very inefficient squid farm if we decide to AFK it 128 blocks above. So if we AFK up here, we can see we get dolphins as well as squids. Squids can kind of fight against the bubble columns, but they can get pulled in and die. Now the problem with this farm is that after the four seconds, the mobs don't pathfind anymore, so they just kind of freeze there. So the current squid count there might be holding up the mob cap, preventing more dolphins and squids from spawning in. So you have to wait for them to despawn. And then new mobs will spawn in and have that chance to pathfind about and die. Keep in mind, dolphins don't spawn inside of frozen or cold oceans. Now let's take a look at my axolotl farm. Now this farm isn't as useful as before because you can't find the super rare axolotls with naturally spawned in ones. Instead you have to breed for them. So I would recommend just building my tropical fish farm, breeding up tons of these guys. But if you want to build this farm, the only things I really changed with this is I put in the clay floor. Now these guys only spawn within 7 blocks of that. And it also has to be placed within a lush caves biome. I also came in and removed the tied up axolotls within this because we no longer have to worry about glow squid because they don't count to the same cap as these guys. In the center here we have our fish which will lure the axolotls from here over into there. One thing we did notice is that they must have changed the pathfinding on these guys because they don't go straight to the center like they used to and instead get kind of caught up on the edges. Other than that everything else works exactly the same and as I said I wouldn't really recommend building this farm anymore. I mostly designed this to get those super rare axolotls before they actually change the way you can get them. And you can find this world download in the description. 
All this talk about oceans, rivers, water, and pulling seemingly endless amounts of stuff out of it is definitely all fun and games when it comes to Minecraft. But in real life, we don't have unlimited amounts of fish or sea creatures. And that's why today's video is in collaboration with Team Seas. This fundraiser was put on by Mr. Beast and Mark Rover, two smart and entertaining YouTubers you probably heard about. The goal of Team Seas is to remove 30 million pounds of trash from the world's ocean, rivers, and beaches. For every dollar donated to it, they will remove one entire pound of trash. They're even using cutting edge technology as as well as having concrete plans on how to accomplish this goal. It's a really big goal at that, but that's why they're asking for donations. They currently got enough to remove 25 million pounds, but they're still quite short of their 30 million pound goal, all by the 1st of January. If you'd like to help them try to reach this goal, I left a link to Team Seas at the top of the description. Even if you're not able to financially donate, just being aware that there is millions and millions of pounds of trash in the Earth's waters is already a great first step, and overall just the amount of trash that is being produced. It all starts from somewhere and all ends up somewhere as well. I personally spent quite a bit of time picking up trash along our local roads. Some of it was purposely thrown out of vehicles, and some of it just got blown out of the back of vehicles. But in the end, it all becomes trash which doesn't just go away and often takes hundreds of years just to break down. As time goes by, we know more and more things from the past are more dangerous than we initially thought. For me, picking up trash was kind of like finding treasures hidden in the grass. But when I was younger, I also spent my summer vacations playing in a landfill dump where I ended up playing with all sorts of nasty things where we dug up and played with corroded batteries and assortment of different chemicals. Not having the money or the infrastructure to dispose of these things properly is why they're eventually ending up in unwanted locations. I'm definitely excited to see humanity overcome the these problems, but it all starts with a simple conversation. I hope your brain didn't burst. In that case, go ahead and check out this playlist here where I try to continue to farm every item in the game Minecraft, or check out this playlist where I design other simple farms for your survival worlds. If you appreciate the hard work I put into designing these farms, make sure to check out my Patreon where I do have a lot of different types of rewards. I would like to thank all you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!